What's happening guys? Happy Saturday evening. Um, hope everyone's enjoying the weather. Uh, it's been an absolute firecracker today. Um, I've unfortunately been out doing a bit of work, uh, had a few call outs, um, got home, finally managed to do, chuck a couple of drumsticks on the barbecue and now I'm here doing this video for you guys. So in today's video uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, when you've got an unvented cylinder and you've got a three port with a two port in series with it going to the cylinder. I had a few questions about this uh, when I posted it up in one of my videos earlier on. Um, how does the set work? Why have you got a three port and a two port? Um, and to be honest, the first time I saw this as well, uh, it kind of threw me because I didn't have my G3, my invented qualification at the time. Um, but for those of you who do, you will know how this works. For those of you who haven't, hopefully they should teach you on the course when you go and do it. But this is just going to explain to you why you have a three port and then a two port as well uh, when you've got an unvented cylinder set up. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, um, I just want to thank you. Uh, if you do enjoy them, please hit the thumbs up, hit the like button, and please subscribe. Uh, it really does help me out. It keeps me motivated to do more and more videos. Um, and yeah, I just want to keep bringing you guys good content. So yeah, if you like it, please like and subscribe. So yeah, let's go on with the video. Right, so we've got an unvented cylinder set up here. Um, you'll notice there's a three port and a two port. The reason for that is when you're fitting uh, an unvented cylinder to a wire plan system, you need to have a two port going to the hot water side, which acts as a safety device. So in case the three port ever fails, um, you don't want the hot water to basically overheat inside the cylinder. So if that ever fails, as soon as the power cuts off, that's just basically spring loaded. So it will just shut the valve off and make sure that no heat can go down this into the cylinder. Otherwise, you can get overheating inside the unvented cylinder, which can obviously cause problems with the TPRV and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's just uh, how it's set up. So here's your basic wiring diagram for a wire plan setup. Um, now, this page has actually been taken from a very useful book um, from another very, very good heating engineer on Instagram. Uh, his name is RS Gas Solutions. Um, so if you're on Instagram and you're not following him, give him a follow. Um, he posts out lots of useful information. Um, and he's actually created this fault finding book. Uh, it's got tons of information on it, fault codes and things like that. A lot of information which, you know, even if you're good at breakdown and you've been doing it for a while, it's still always handy to have some reference material on you. Um, if you're interested in getting one of these, uh, give him a message on Instagram. I'm sure he'll be able to sort you out. And um, in fact, I think he may be working on a version two. So I don't know if he's got any more of these left, uh, but definitely give him a follow and uh, keep an eye out to see if he's got any more of these left or when he's gonna be releasing uh, the version two. So when we're working on this three port and two port setup, we're only interested in the hot water on side of things. We're not worried about the central heating side of things and we're not worried about the hot water off side of things because they stay exactly the same as it would on a normal, on a normal three port. So just to recap, heating on, whichever terminal block it's going to, would then go to your common on your room stat, which when you turn it on, would go to the white on your three port, which will energize and send 230 volts to the switch live or down the orange, which would then send power down to the switch live on the boiler and the pump if it's got a separate pump live. Next, hot water off, that's gonna stay exactly the same. So whichever terminal block it's going to, it's gonna be linked to satisfied on your cylinder stat, which is also gonna be linked to the gray on your three port. So that's that's connection stays exactly the same and that just goes to hot water off, so nothing changes there. Now this is where things change. So this is your normal three port setup. So normally you'd have hot water on, would go via the terminal block to common on your cylinder stat. Your cylinder stat would then click on. So it's calling for heat. That would then just go straight down to the boiler and tell it to turn on. And it's as simple as that. Now I'm gonna show you how you break that connection or you break that link with another two port in series with it. Right, now here's another wiring diagram. Now, don't be put off by 
how it's laid out. You know, different wire diagrams will be laid out differently, but if you just follow the lines, um, they will still go in the same place as you would with any other wiring diagram. So again, if we start with, from the programmer, heating on, if you follow that, all that does, it links in the terminal block, goes to number one on the room set, which is your common, clicks over when you turn it up, which goes to number three, goes to number five, which all it does is follow that, follow that, follow that. And that's going to white on the three port. Now, all you, all that will happen there is the 230 volts will then go over to the orange, which will then follow that back down to number 10. And then into there, that will go to the live to the boiler and also live to the pump. So it's exactly the same as the first one that we just saw. And the same thing is going to happen with the hot water off. So if you just follow that, it's going to link in the terminal block, which then is going to link to the gray on the three port and also satisfied on the cylinder start. So that's exactly the same as the last one. Right now here's, here's where things get a little bit more interesting. So this is your wiring for your three port and this is your wiring for your two port. So now if you remember in the standard three port setup, you'd have hot water on from the programmer, goes up to the cylinder stat, which is still the same. Normally when it will click over and it will call for heat, that 230 volts would go straight down to the boiler live and the pump live. However, in this situation, you've got a two port which is interrupting that live. So when you do get a demand on the cylinder stat, rather than it going straight to the boiler, it has to first go anywhere in the terminal block, number eight in this instance, which then goes to the brown on the two port, which allows the two port to open and then sends 230 volts down the orange and then down to the boiler and the pump. Now the reason for this is because on an unvented cylinder, if you've just got a wire plan set up and you're, well, if you've got an existing wire plan set up and you're just replacing an open vent cylinder with an unvented cylinder and you're not changing it from a wire plan to an S plan, the three port valve, if you remember, always sits in the hot water position as default. So let's say if the three port fails, then that unvented cylinder is gonna keep heating and heating and heating and heating and heating. So what happens is a two port valve, it acts as a safety device because if the two port valve fails, it just shuts off. It stops anything going past. So it automatically springs back into its closed position. So whenever you're installing an unvented cylinder on a wire plan system, you always have to have a two port which acts as a safety device. So here's what you would normally find uh, with an unvented cylinder on a basic wire plan setup. So the three port at rest sits in the hot water position or if it fails, it would spring back into hot water position, which means that any heat from the boiler would flow up through the three port and continuously go down the hot water side. Now, if this was an open vent cylinder, it wouldn't be too much of a problem because the excess heat and or steam that it generates would then just pump out um, through the open vent. However, when you've got an unvented cylinder, you do have the TPRV, which is protecting it. Uh, however, the two port is an additional safety device. So if this was to fail, the two port would only open when there's a demand. With no demand, or if the two port was ever to fail, that would automatically spring shut. Now I've just shown that as like as gates or doors which are open, which is allowing the water to flow through. And if this was to fail, or if it was, uh, if there was no demand, or if the demand was satisfied, if you just imagine that would just basically, oh, this pen doesn't work. Uh, that would just shut. So you wouldn't have any more flow going that way. It would literally stop at the two port and stop the water inside the cylinder from overheating. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's how an unvented cylinder works on a wire plan system uh, where you've got a three port and a two port next to it. Uh, so I hope this helps you guys understand how it works as a safety device and also more importantly, how to wire it up as well um, because it can be a bit daunting, especially if you're new to wiring. Um, me personally, 
if I'm thinking on venting cylinder on a Y plan system, I always try and convert it to S plan anyway. Um, but it's going to come down to the customer's budget at the end of the day. And if they can't stretch to, you know, get that little bit extra work done, you can still fit on a Y plan system, but you must have that two port in place um, in order to uh, create an additional form of safety. So yeah, hope you guys found this useful. And again, if you've liked the video and you like the information, please hit the like button, please subscribe and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.